Welcome guys, welcome back to the WSXM channel to where a united Africa is an undisputed Africa. My name is Teflon, for those of you who does not know me, so welcome to the channel. And also, tell a friend, tell a friend, don't know, like, comment, share, subscribe. Once you like this video, you don't know that works, so anyway, help the channel to grow. So, President Ruto dissolved his cabinet, and not only does this dissolve his cabinet, he only thinks save three she, um, his vice president, he, he did not trouble the Minister of Foreign Affairs and the Minister of the Diaspora, which is Caribbean people. Um, those two ministers are still, two ministers plus his vice president is still there, but the rest of the, he got to the entire cabinet and said so that he wants a, um, a national government, which means he's going to involve all the parties. But take a listen to this first before we die, and then, and then not before. Take a listen to it, and then we're going to dive into the. To the um to decipher what he's actually doing if he's correct or not but let's take a listen to, the, to him first so we can dissect it boom to what the people of kenya have said and after a holistic appraisal of the performance of my cabinet and its achievements and challenges i have today in line with the powers given to me by Article 1521 and 1525B of the Constitution and Sections 130, Sections 12 of the Office of the Attorney General's Act decided to dismiss with immediate effect all the Cabinet Secretaries and Attorney General of the Republic of Kenya, of the Cabinet of Kenya, except the Prime Cabinet Secretary and Cabinet Secretary for Secretary uh, and secretary for and cabinet secretary for foreign affairs and diaspora affairs and of course the office of the deputy president is not affected in any way i will immediately engage in extensive consultations across different sectors and political formations and other kenyans both in public and private, with the aim of setting up a broad-based government that will assist me in accelerating and expediting the necessary, urgent, and irreversible implementation of the program that we have, including other radical measures and programs to deal with the burden of debt, to explore raising domestic resources and revenues, expanding job opportunities, eliminating wastage and unnecessary duplication over multiplicity of government agencies, and slaying the dragon of corruption. So that's President Ruto the press conference, which makes no sense because now he's talking about having a broad-based government. But why wasn't this the, the, the starting of your cabinet when you say you want to have big, get better men for Kenya? No. Majority of President Ruto's cabinet now are millionaires. Why? Because they are corrupt and they are crooked and they are thieves. They are, number one, they, most of them own multi million dollar homes, Bentleys, Mercedes. They have, they're using government run businesses to enrich themselves, especially in the agricultural field. They are buying um, the feed and fertilizer by the tons and then come return with it and sell it to the citizens at a higher, a higher cost to enrich themselves, to make themselves more richer. And um, the parliamentarian Richard had said this. He, he gave up a, a scathing review of the parliamentarian and said, how are you owning Bentleys that cost 49 million shillings? But yet, you don't have hospitals, you don't have schools, you're cutting funds for hospitals, you're cutting funds for schools, and this, the hospitals are already in debt by millions, billions of dollars. Now you want to talk about building a new hospital. Where is this money going to come from? The citizens are going to, have to pay more taxes, which is why the riot started, and then he, he kept the arm, he, he dismantled the bill, and said, so now he's talking about firing the entire, which now he just fired the entire cabinet, but... It's a little bit too late. The people said they want him out because even though he fired his cabinet, they, are fo they were following his, um, his way of managing the country. 
his parliament and him racked up a 12.6 billion um dollar um 12.6 billion sh um shillings um in cost of just traveling 12.6 billion shillings this man spending nine months like almost a year so that 12.6 billion dollars could do a, could do a lot for the country infrastructure wise cutting down your debt tax and um, helping citizens to curve inflation but no you're not in with yourself as i said earlier they own mansions they own apartments they own mercedes and bentley's and their salaries is just like f between five to six thousand US dollars per month. That's what they earn per month. Between five to six thousand US dollars. Five to six thousand US dollars cannot buy you a mansion, cannot buy you a Bentley, you cannot buy you a Mercedes. Because that's mean you're earning roughly let's say let's say six sixty thousand to seventy thousand per year. That cannot buy a Bentley. A Bentley is like um a father nine shillings is gonna translate roughly to around two hundred and look over two hundred thousand. So your car cover your salary five, six years in advance. So and plus you have, you have a mansion. You have you have um apartments for rent uh, according to the um what the department even um stated in parliament from the parliament floor. So he's not lying. So the people are suffering, but you are thriving and they keep trying to raise their salaries every year. Every July seventh they up their salaries to show you that they're not working for the people. So this speech basically fall on deaf ears because the citizens want President Ruto himself to resign, have new elections so they can um, um, install a new government. But no, he's going to dissolve government and say no, he wants a broad-based government. But what is this? This, this? this won't make a difference because you are still the president. You are the one who is going to um, still go to these colonizers for loans from the IMF. You're in Haiti because of America, of America, because they give you 100 million. So you're doing things that benefits the colonizers and other countries, but they're not doing anything for your citizens. So this broad-based government is just a ploy to stay in power. He does not interested in helping the Kenyans, no. It is a ploy for him to stay in power because he stated in an interview, he only, during the riot, only six persons or something like that and, uh, was unalive. Now we get to find out that over 40 people lost their lives and hundreds injured. So and even on national TV, he lied directly to the citizens. And he continued lies about different, different um, issues. When he, he got, he, him and his government got the, the opposition leader arrested and then say, oh, they had an arrest warrant for him. When it was not a fact, it was, they was basically abduct him, kidnap him to intimidate him. But it did not work. It backfires. So he's been doing a lot, a lot in the country to save face while lying. Every time he opened his mouth, there's a lie coming out of it. So this barbarous government is just another ploy. Most likely, he was advised by the Americans to do this. So okay, if he was really, if he really wanted to have change, he'd have dissolved parliament and and called for new elections. But no, he said that he's gonna stay in power and have a barbarous government, just like what. President Ramaphosa in South Africa is doing currently with the DA party. Which is, and it's not working because they already have tons of infighting. So this barbarous government idea is pushed on them, forced on them by the outside forces to have this ridiculous idea of having a barbarous government. It doesn't work. Anyway, so let me know what you think about this in the comment section. As always, I don't know. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thanks for listening. Boom.